Well, it's been just over two weeks since Starship launched on its second integrated flight test, and there's already a ton of work happening both here at the launch site and back at the production site in order to prepare for Flight 3. We have multiple vehicles in production and getting ready to enter testing. We have a huge expansion on going to the orbital tank farm. We have work continuing on the orbital launch mount, as usual. And of course, we got a fancy new sign. Howdy, Star fans. I'm Jack for NSF, and this is your Starbase update. All right, now let's start things off with our good friend Ship 28, which we think will be the next starship to fly. Ship 28 has received a lot of attention in the last week as teams work to get its thermal protection system tiles installed ahead of engine testing. Ship 28, if you remember, had been installed on the engine installation stand for months and months. So now that it's back in the high bay, teams have been able to work on the TPS system and give it the love and care that it needs. Of course, two weeks ago, we saw a whole bunch of tiles falling off of Ship 25 during the launch. So hopefully the story with Ship 28 will be a different one. It's always really fascinating to see workers putting the tiles on the vehicle. It seems like it could be a monotonous job, but it also seems like it might be fun. In these clips, you may also see lots of lifts around the rest of the vehicles in the high bay. Ship 30 and Ship 29 are also being worked on, as these will likely be the ships next in line after Ship 28. So it's good to have some of this work done ahead of time. Next up, construction of the Star Factory continued as work on the future nose cone production area of the building nears completion. We can see here only a tiny fraction of the building remains to get a wall and roof panels. And even better, the bridge cranes can also be seen installed. The one on the left side of this shot is rated for 50 tons, while the one on the right is actually two cranes rated for 25 tons each. So together, they should be capable of also lifting 50 tons. Now that's quite a lot of mass, especially when you consider that the nose cone is just a very small part of Starship's overall structure. But it could be that these cranes are rated to lift an entire fully outfitted nose cone, which would of course be quite heavy. This side of the Star Factory may also be big enough to hold the nose cone already stacked on its payload bay section, so that's more mass to add when thinking about this whole thing. It'll definitely be interesting to see what all this looks like once production is in full swing, and hopefully we get some insights into that as the walls of the Star Factory are not exactly transparent. Also at the production site next door to the Star Factory, Mega Bay 2 is also getting some love, with new glass panels installed on its upper level. We can see in this clip how the new panels look to be about twice as tall as the ones installed on Mega Bay 1. Oh man. What I wouldn't give to be able to see Starbase, or especially a launch, through those windows. What a view. Now let's move next door to the production site to the Sanchez lot, where a weird new concrete structure is getting built. We spotted this construction from our most recent flyover of Starbase, but frankly it's hard to tell either from the air or the ground what this might be for. Right now it just looks like a big concrete box. By now, you all know the drill. We're just gonna have to wait and see what this structure ends up being for. Also here at the Sanchez lot, the very last piece of SN15 is finally getting scrapped. This is the aft section or engine section of SN15, and it has been waiting around for quite a while for teams to get around to scrapping it. And I guess here we are. I maintain that this shouldn't be happening. SN15 should be in a museum and that this is a travesty, but what do I know? So long, good buddy. Thanks for all the data, and you will be missed. Now, before we come here to the launch site to talk about all of the activity that's been happening, I have to make a mention of Massey's Outpost, where the Ship 24.2 test article has apparently, potentially, undergone some testing. In fact, it may have even completed that testing already. We can see that as late as November 29th, the ropes used for tugging on the structure to simulate loads were still connected. But then by December 1st, when I went over to Massey's, I took this clip of the test article and the ropes had been removed. So does that mean that testing of ship 24.2 is complete? Well, maybe. Or maybe something broke and they need to fix that before continuing on with testing. Either way, we don't know. Now, if you don't remember, this test article is being used to test loads on the current design of the ship payload bay section. 
It could be that SpaceX has decided to skip this testing or cut it short, since it's about to introduce version 2 of Starship, which may very well have a different payload bay design. Either way, it's quite a curious thing and we'll keep our eyes on it in the future. With that minor mystery out of the way, let's now move here to the launch site and discuss all of the work that's been happening. And let's start with the expansion to the orbital tank farm. You may remember from a few months ago when we saw teams install new subcoolers and new pumps at the orbital tank farm. But we also said that these had not been plugged into the existing tank farm plumbing and they were not used during Starship's second flight. Well, that's probably going to change for the third flight because all of this is now being connected into the existing orbital tank farm plumbing. We can see here workers installing scaffolding around the methane subcoolers. And then a few days later, a new manifold has already been installed on the third of the four methane subcoolers. Again, for the second flight, only two methane subcoolers were used, and now the other two are being plugged in. The changes aren't limited to the methane side, though. The oxygen subcoolers are also seeing a similar expansion, and it'll be a matter of days until everything is nicely put together. I expect we'll see a lot of purging, cleaning, testing, and other kinds of work on all of this plumbing in the coming days and weeks, so something to keep an eye out for on Starbase Live. But wait, there's more. Work is not just happening on the existing tank farm infrastructure, but on a huge expansion to it as well. You may remember from our Starbase flyovers that a bunch of stands had been built on the former Starship landing pad for what appeared to be new horizontal tanks. Lo and behold, these tanks have now arrived. Well, sort of. Five tanks have arrived. We think based on the pedestals that they can hold up to nine tanks. That's right, nine tanks. So another four tanks will be brought to Starbase and installed here. As for what these tanks will hold, we're not fully sure yet. Sean took pictures of one of the labels on one of the tanks, and that said that it was for nitrogen. But liquid nitrogen tanks can easily, well, easily be converted for use with liquid oxygen, so it's not exactly full confirmation yet. For now, these tanks will serve as an extension to the existing storage tanks, but do you remember when Elon said that the big vertical tanks would go away and that they would be replaced by horizontal tanks? Well, we think that this is one step in that direction, although it's kind of hard to say whether this is the complete replacement or whether more storage tanks will be needed to replace the big vertical ones, since after all, they're quite huge. One way we'll be able to know for sure what kind of consumable these tanks will deliver is by looking at the pipes inside of the tank farm that they are hooked into. These lines are already being installed and hardware is being put in place to hook these tanks into the existing tank farm rather quickly. With all of this tank farm work, we can expect Booster 10's testing may take a little while to occur as a lot of work needs to happen to clean up everything, purge all the new lines, test the new hardware, and much more. Of course, SpaceX could do one of its trademark work surges and complete this kind of work in just a few days, but so far, no surges. Work is not only ongoing on the orbital tank farm, but also the orbital launch mount. And a lot has happened in the last week. For example, we saw the removal of clamps from the orbital launch mount. These clamps hold onto the base of the booster and keep everything in place during ground operations. The removal of these clamps might not be a bad sign exactly. It could just be that they're inspecting them and making sure everything is still correct and in place after Starship's second launch. It makes sense that it would be good to check these things before their next use. After all, they were right next to the world's most powerful rocket ever as it lifted off the mount. We've also seen the comeback of the dance floor and the installation of more scaffolding on its interior, likely for refurbishment and inspection work on the inner side of the orbital launch mount ring. We also had the removal of the hood at the back of the booster quick disconnect. With this hood removed, SpaceX teams will be able to have access to all of the lines that supply fluids and power to Super Heavy. Again, no doom and gloom here. This is all very important work, even if everything is in perfect shape, because teams need to evaluate the status of the GSC hardware. You know what I always say, more data is more better. And with this precious data, SpaceX will be able to evaluate the orbital launch mount and determine what needs more protection, what has enough, 
what doesn't need as much protection. And all of this precious data will be used in order to enable making this launch pad rapidly reusable. This is exactly how, for example, Falcon 9's launch pad at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station got to the point where SpaceX is now able to support one or two launches a week with really not much work in between them. Eventually, Starship's launch pads will have to be even better than that, with not only not a lot of work in between launches, but just no work at all. Just like every flight is an immense opportunity for SpaceX engineers to improve the Starship vehicle itself, they're also a great opportunity to improve the launch pad as well, and this is just the beginning of that. This week, the orbital launch mount also received the guiding pins that are used to carefully position the booster in the exact right location for the clamps to connect with the aft end of the vehicle. These pins are normally removed before flight, usually when it is assumed that the booster will not be leaving the mount unless it's under its own power. They then have to be reinstalled for the next booster to be able to be lifted into place using the chopsticks. Speaking of which, the old chopsticks have also been getting some love since Starship's second flight. After flight two, we saw some wires were dangling from them and they had some minor damage that had been done as well. So now teams are obviously working on fixing all of this and putting everything back to normal. With the chopsticks work and the guiding pins back on the orbital launch mount, it could be not very long until we see Booster 10 roll out here for its static fire test campaign. But there's still a lot of work to be done, so it's hard to say exactly when that'll happen. And that's not even to mention all of the work that Booster 10 might now be getting as a result of the data gained from Booster 9 on Flight 2. This week, we also saw the big SpaceX-branded LR-11000 crane waking up at the launch site. You can't, you can't really see it, it's, it's behind the tower, but it's there. This crane had been lowered prior to launch so as to keep it protected, but now it's back up and running once more. Hopefully, it's soon used to lift Ship 28 onto suborbital pad B, whenever Ship 28 rolls to the launch site. Again, just like with Booster 10, it's difficult to tell when that'll happen, but at least the test stand looks to be ready to receive the ship, compared to the orbital launch mount still having a bit of work left to receive a booster. Just like with Booster 10, it's hard to say when Ship 28 will roll out for engine testing, but at least compared to the orbital launch mount and the work left to go to get it ready for a booster, Suborbital Pad B appears ready to receive a ship. And finally, another thing that happened this week was the installation of a brand new sign here at the launch site. The new sign is located on the new wall that had been built at the suborbital side of the launch complex. The font and materials appear pretty much the same as the sign near the entrance to Starbase that says Starbase. But this one, as you can see, says Gateway to Mars. That's pretty cool, and it's very on brand for SpaceX. There were so many memes when these letters were getting installed, and it kind of just goes to show that even though we're two weeks away from the last launch, I think we're all yearning for another full stack back here at the launch site. Just the day before recording this video, crews were lighting up different parts of the sign and testing it, so we all kind of thought that the sign would be lit up, and in fact, I hung out at the launch site for several hours waiting for that to happen. And of course, it didn't. So when will they light the sign? We don't know, but maybe it will already be lit by the time you watch this. Either way, I spent several hours waiting and went home empty handed, but that's par for the course for Starbase. Well, that's gonna be it for this week. We hope you all enjoyed this episode of Starbase Update and we hope you come back next week for more action-packed Starship goodness. But until then, don't forget, be excellent to each other. Oh, 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 also, quick update. Uh, I'm going back to LA, so hooray! But that means I'm leaving Starbase, so this might be the last on-location update I do for a little while. But have no fear, Starbase update isn't going anywhere, and we all know I'll be back.